How's it going everyone? It's me Lone back with another Fight 76 video and Steel Rain is almost up by the time this video goes live. It should be out in several hours or so. So before it goes live, I wanted to make sure that I got a guide video out about Legendary Power Armor because that is coming to the game with Steel Rain and I want to make sure that you all know exactly what you need to know about it, all the attributes that you can roll on Legendary Power Armor and some suggestions in terms of the best effects to have on your Power Armor. So if you enjoyed this video, if it helps you, please like it. I would really appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new, but with all that out of the way, let's get to the video. Alrighty, we are outside of the game for this one because I thought the best way to present this info was to show you all the legendary attributes that are and are not coming to Power Armor in some tables. These are not the fanciest tables out there, but they get to the point. They are split according to legendary stars, so one star, two star, three star, pretty self-explanatory. And as mentioned, I have two lists here. So the first list here are the exceptions. These are the legendary attributes that you cannot roll on pieces of legendary power armor. You can roll them, of course, on regular, normal um, armor as legendary if you want to but you just simply cannot get them in your power armor pieces. So keep that in mind. I want to cover that first so we're all clear about it. And then the second list that I have are the actual attributes that you can get on legendary pieces of power armor. So we're going to cover that second. Um, but I do just want to provide a general overview about legendary power armor to try and answer any questions you may have. If I've missed anything, if you have any other questions, just let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer you to the best of my abilities. But simply, how does legendary power armor work in the game? Effectively, it works just the same as regular armor pieces as legendary. When you kill a legendary enemy, you have the chance to drop a piece of legendary power armor. You can also go to the purveyor and purchase a piece of legendary power armor from her, but you just cannot control the actual piece of power armor you're getting. So you might get an excavator, you might get a radar legendary power armor. So that's, that's not the best method either. The best method, the third method, as I've presented before in a video, the best method to be getting your pieces of legendary power armor is by utilizing the new legendary crafting system. Because in that sense, you can actually control the specific pieces of power armor you are turning legendary or that you're modifying to become legendary. So you can get your full set of T65 power armor as legendary or the new Hellcat power armor as, le as legendary if you want to. And that's the method that you should be using. Save your legendary modules and your legendary cores for that if that's what you want to be doing. But yeah, let me cover all of the legendary attributes that aren't going to come to the power armor, the ones that you cannot roll, and then we'll cover the ones that you can actually get and what you should be aiming towards. And as mentioned, I'll provide some suggestions throughout that section. So first of all, what can you not roll on legendary power armor? So for the first star, you've got life saving. So when incapacitated, gaining a 50% chance to revive yourself with a stim pack once every minute. Essentially, there is a legendary perk card that does the exact same thing. So that's why it's not coming. Unyielding, gain up to plus three to all stats except endurance when low health. That one is sticking purely to regular armor. It is not coming to legendary power armor. And then weightless, weighs 90% less and does not count as armor for the chameleon mutation. That one simply is just, you know, not coming to power armor. So those are the first stars. The third stars, these ones make a lot of sense. So when you talk about acrobats, reduces form falling damage by 50%. Of course, it's not really applicable to power armor because you've got the hero fall and you don't really, you know, gain any damage from that. Divers, grants the ability to breathe on the water. Of course, you can really do that in power armor. Improve sneaking, but become harder to detect while sneaking. Don't be using your power armor for sneaking anyways, all right? You can, but there are better methods out there. And reduce limb damage. You receive 15% less limb damage. You can't really get limb damage in power armor. So that's why those attributes are not coming to power armor. But now let's cover all the legendary attributes that are coming to legendary power armor. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still a little bit uh, backed up. Let me cover all the legendary attributes that are coming to power armor in the game. I'm sorry for that. I couldn't help myself. So first of all, aristocrats. This is one of the new ones. So you get up to plus 20 energy and damage resistance, the higher your caps. So essentially you want to have beyond 29,000 caps in the game because that's going to provide you for each piece that you have as aristocrat plus 20 energy and damage resistance. So I would say aristocrat is not one of the top tier ones out there when it comes to power armor because you already have so much energy and damage resistance in most power armor plus that inherent 42 percent protection when it comes to to damage and then when the help with the hellfire power armor you have that inherent uh 10 overall ballistic reduction in damage so aristocrat is a it, it's a nice to have if you want it um to provide you you know even more protection to make sure you're an absolute tank but i think there are some other better ones out there 
assassins less damage from humans like i would say that's one of the lower tier ones but if you want to do that you know of course you can auto stim you automatically use a stim pack when hit while health is uh 25 or less once every 60 seconds so look if that's you if you're a bloodied build and you like that kind of effect just to make sure that you are always healed you can use it i tend to stay away from that effect and that perk card in the game when it comes to regular armor but if you want to of course you can bolstering now i would say bolstering is of course the if you're bloodied of course it's better than aristocrats right if you're not bloodied you would want to go to to aristocrats to get your energy and damage resistance up because you don't need to lower your health for that you just need to have over twenty nine thousand caps but if you are bloodied you might as well have bolstering right so bolstering grants you plus 35 energy and damage resistance to lower your health so when you're below 20 percent health you get that full energy and damage resistance so if again if you want to be a tank for sure have bolstering if you're a bloodied build if you don't want to be a bloodied build and you're a full health build or whatever it might be then just use aristocrats to become that tank instead uh, so moving on from bolstering chameleon blend with the environment while sneaking and not moving again i would say power armor is not the best for sneaking anyways um there's better armor out there for that but if you want to use it in a pinch sure you can have one piece of legendary power armor as a chameleon if you want to cloaking be, uh, being hit in melee generates a stealth field once per 30 seconds if that's for you i would say chameleon's probably the better method of staying stealthy but again these are pieces that you can equip on your on your different limbs and your torso so you can have one chameleon one cloaking mix it up how, however you want to that's the beauty of these kinds of legendary effects they apply even if you just have one piece on you which is cool uh, exterminators 15% less damage from Milox and bugs ghoul slayers 15% less damage from ghouls and hunters 15% less damage from animals so again if you want to combine those to be a little bit more protected against some of the common animals and, and stuff in the game you can do that but as i said power armor is, is inherently very very protective so i would say unless you have a really kind of regular and basic piece of power armor like a lower level one a raider one an excavator one whatever it might be i would probably say there are better attributes out there for you to aim towards uh mutants so plus 10 damage and energy resistance if you are mutated again bolstering and aristocrats provide better resistance if that's what you're aiming for but it'll do in a pinch if you happen to roll it and you don't have anything else. And you are mutated, of course. Mutant Slayers, uh, again, this is one of the less damage from enemies one. So 15% uh, less damage from Super Mutants. Super Mutants are pretty common in the game and they're probably the more deadly out of the other ones here. Um, although some my lurks are pretty deadly <laughs> and some bugs actually. So I would say out of the, the en enemy reducing ones, this Mutant Slayers is probably one of the better ones out there. Um, Nocturnal damage resistance, uh, damage and energy resistance increase at night. If you ever are playing at night, you don't get a debuff during the day e either, which is nice. Um, so yeah, if, if that's you, you can use it. Overeaters. Now, this is I, I want to talk about Overeaters because this is the one that I'm aiming towards, right? Because it's so bloody good. If you really want to be a tank in Power Armor, try and get overeaters the effect is increases damage reduction up to six six percent as you fill your hunger and thirst meters and of course that's for each piece that you have all right so they stack in that regard for sure this is one of the best out there i've said that before in the past generally a percentage based damage reduction is better than simple damage resistance okay and you're getting that with overeaters and all you need to do is make sure that your hunger and thirst meters are full and that's going to give you a benefit as well in terms of your ap regen and your health so you want to be doing that anyways in the game you don't get a negative from not doing it but you get a positive so for sure do it and if you have overeaters you're reducing your damage reduction by another six percent for each of those pieces that you have it would be so good yes it doesn't affect energy resistance but again you can be utilizing the the legendary per card uh for uh power armor electrical absorption to counteract that to make sure that you know energy damage isn't really affecting you that much and is actually healing you so for sure overeaters is one of the best legendary effects out there i would suggest going for that if you really want to become a tank in the game for sure so regenerating slowly regenerate health while not in combat if that's you if you don't want to find your stim packs it's a nice one to have but you can also just have it on a, on a piece of power armor that you don't wear all the time you can chuck it on and it you know it saves the need for you to be using a stim pack when you're outside of combat troubleshooters again 15 percent less damage from robots one of the better ones in that category for sure vanguards grants up to 35 uh, energy resistance and damage resistance the higher your health so if you are full health 
Vanguards is the way to go. I, I didn't cover it up here with Aristocrats, but it, of course it's better than Aristocrats because it provides you more energy and damage resistance, but you need to make sure that you are full health. The benefit of, of, of Aristocrats is that it's not going to ch chop and change in the middle of a fight, right? You're always going to have, presumably, 29,000 plus caps in, in, a, in the middle of a combat fight. That's better in that sense than Vanguards because once you lose your little bit of your health, you're actually losing energy and damage resistance in the process. So if you don't want that to happen to you, if you always want to have that energy and damage resistance, albeit at a lower level, that's when you have Aristocrats. If you want to have the maximum amount and you're always going to be healing, then you want to have Vanguards instead. So that's the difference between then. Again, situational, pick and choose um, which one that you want. And then Zealots, 15% uh, less damage from Scorched. So let's move on to the two-star ones. You can still see it. Okay, I'm still recording. Good, good. Hopefully I don't cough again. So <laughs> the two-star ones. Agility, plus one agility. Now again, like these plus one special ones, they're nice. Like each special attribute does give you a, a specific benefit. For instance, endurance will give you a, a little bit more health. Intelligence will, intelligence will give you a little bit more XP, etc., etc. You can go into the wiki and determine all the actual effects or, of what boosting your special attributes do. But I would say generally that, you know, try and aim for something else. Again, if you get it, it's a, it's a nice little bonus to have plus one agility to have a little bit more AP. Great but I will try and aim for, for some of these other ones out there because there are some really good ones here. So I will quickly move past some of the special ones, but when we've got antiseptic, plus 25% environmental disease resistance, uh, disease cures are fairly common in the game and you, you have the symptomatic uh, camp object as well, as some of you have gotten that. So if you're happy to wait to go back to your camp to remove your diseases, then antiseptic is probably one that you don't need. Um, charisma, plus one charisma, endurance, plus one endurance, fireproof. He's one of the better ones for sure. So fireproof plus 25 fire resistance, really nice. If you don't want to use that legendary perk card to be getting your fire resistance, because as a full set, that actually applies to power armor when it's the matching pieces, mind you. Um, if you don't want to use that legendary perk card, then having fireproof is, is really, really nice. And fire damage, it comes by every now and again, Molotov, co Molotov cocktail, um, certain robots as well, uh, enemies with flamers, for instance. But yeah, it's a nice one. I, I would definitely consider it to be one of the better second star attributes out there. Glutton, hunger and thirst grow 10% slower, stacks up to a maximum of 50%. This pairs really well with overeaters. So if you want to get overeaters, pairing it and trying to get Glutton as your second attribute is definitely a solid uh, tactic because it, it means you don't need to be using you know, food and drink as much to be keeping your levels high um, to make sure Overeaters is actually active properly to its, full to its full extent. But if you have a bunch of food and a bunch of purified water, maybe Gluttons is something that you don't necessarily need. Now, Hardy, one of the best ones for sure, receives 10% less explosion damage. I, I underestimate in the game how often explosion damage actually happens because i use the dense mod on my secret service armor which means i don't get explosion damage the amount of times that i have a super mutant with the bloody um uh, what's it called the suiciders right they come up and they explode the amount of times that, that happens to me the amount of times that a grenade go goes off near me and i don't really get affected by it i, I take it for granted so having 10 percent less explosion damage is a nice one to have for sure that's a very decent second star attribute when it comes to power armor Hazmat, plus 25% plus 25 radiation resistance. Power armor is very good when it comes to radiation resistance. So I wouldn't worry so much about hazmat. Intelligence, again, that's probably the best when it comes to special because it gives you a little bit more XP. So, so then you have luck, plus one luck, perception, plus one perception. Again, I'm not going to go through all the things that all the specials can do. Poisoners, one of the better ones out there. Plus 25 poison resistance. Really nice. Again, there's a legendary perk card that does the same thing. But especially if you are a bloodied user, you will take this 25 poison resistance any day of the week. Because you only really need 25, maybe 50 poison resistance to be protected from it as a bloodied user. If you are a full health user, less reason for you to have poison resistance. But it's still important, all right? You know, the Stingwigs and the and the Milo Queens, they can wreck you with that poison damage. So I would say definitely one of the better ones out there. But here we get to Powered. Increased AP refresh speed, the best for sure. You really want to have Powered at least one, two, 
Three if you can, then it starts to get to diminishing returns, but if you can get a couple of pieces of powered power armor in the game as legendary, that's what you really want because you don't have a yielding effect, you can't be getting, you don't have as much AP, you want to refresh it as much as possible. Get action boy or girl as the perk card and then try and get in, uh, powered to get that increased AP refresh speed. For sure, that's super, super useful in power armor and, and definitely one of the best, if not the best, second star attribute. Strength, plus one strength, if that's you, and warming, so plus 25 cryo resistance. Yeah, probably not as important as poison resist, for instance, or maybe even fire resistance, but cryo does come up every now and again, so you'll take that one in a pinch. Now we got the final ones, the three stars. I'm still recording, yeah. The three star legendary attributes. So let's cover these. And we got some nice new ones as well. So throughout, I've been covering a lot of legendary attributes that you might think, like, I've never seen that before in the game, because a lot of these are new. So I'm going to be covering a lot of new ones in this particular category, which is cool. So burning, 5% chance to deal 100 fire damage to melee attackers. Really nice, all right? Really nice. It's not going to deal, the, you know, the most damage out there in the world, and it's a 5% chance. So you, you want to try and get as many of these pieces as possible to get as much damage as you can. But it's a really nice little legendary effect, um, especially if ghouls are attacking you and, and whatever. So burning is nice. Cavaliers reduce damage while blocking by 15%. If you block a lot, that's one that you want. If you don't, then it's not necessarily one that you need. This has the same name, I know. But 75% chance to reduce damage by 15% while sprinting. One of the best ones. I would say, I think it's like the second best one from memory. Um, or se second or third best. But definitely, it's not as effective because you can't run as much in regular armor as you can with power armor. Um, or the other way around. I just confused my, confuse myself. But in power armor, you can't run as much. So it's not as important as it, as it would be on a regular piece of legendary armor. But for sure, you will have that, you would take that chance to reduce your damage while sprinting any day of the week, especially if you are taking damage and you're trying to escape. Having that reduction while you're sprinting is really nice. So for sure, keep an eye out for this legendary attribute. Dissipating, slowly regen radiation damage while not in combat. If you're, if you're a bloodied user, you obviously don't want this, but for sure, it's something that you would take if you are just a regular user in the game, a regular um, um, build in the game, like a full health build, for instance, and you don't care about keeping up your rads so high. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, so, Doctors. Stimpaks, Radaway, and Radex are 5% more effective. Again, it's a nice one. You'll take that in a pinch if you really want to. Durability breaks 50% slower. If you don't want to keep using repair kits or repairing your power armor, Definitely a nice one to have, for sure. Electrified, another damage dealing one, so 5% chance to deal 100 energy damage to melee attackers. Look, generally, you take any one of these. Fire damage, energy damage, cryo damage. They're all really nice, I would say. So then frozen damage, 5% chance to deal 100 cryo damage to melee attackers too. So obviously, not helping you against uh, ranged enemies, your super mutants, anyone else shooting, shooting at you. But for sure, you would take them for ghouls and whatnot. Reduced ammo weight, really nice. This is one of the best ones for sure. Reducing your ammo weight by 20%, even just having one of your pieces with that is so, so good because it reduces all of your ammo, not just specific types, all of your ammo in the game. Really, really nice. I love reduced ammo weight. I also love reduced uh, food, drink, and chem, chem weight. So food, drink, and chem weights are reduced by 20%. Another one that you'll take, quality of life, de yes, definitely, but it means you don't have to micromanage your, your stash so much. Reduced junk weight, another nice one if you if you collect a lot of junk. Junk items are uh, reduced by 20%. Reduced weapon weight, really nice in power armor, especially because you're probably a heavy guns user, which tend to weigh a lot. So weapon weight, weights are reduced by 20%. Definitely something that you want in power armor for sure. Safe crackers increases the size of sweet spot while picking locks. Um, definitely, definitely one of the lower tier ones out there. And then sentinels. This is the best one, for sh especially in power armor. I got confused before, but in power armor, you're not running as much. You're probably standing still more. So Sentinels is definitely, even more so than regular armor, it's the best, I would say, third, third, third star attribute. Can't talk today. The best third star attribute for legendary power armor. So 75% chance to reduce damage by, by 15% while standing still. So if you're a power armor, right, and you've got a couple of these going, and you're standing still, you're firing your heavy gun. That 75% chance procs or activates every time an enemy hits you, okay? So reducing your damage by 15%, 15, 15, 15, 15, it adds up, man. It's, it adds up. And then when you add overeaters on there to reduce your damage even more, you have a Hellfire power armor or Hellcat power armor, I should say, to reduce your ballistic damage even more. You can become, like, for sure, by far, power armor, if you want to be a tank in the game, is the best way. 
100%. And Sentinels just reinforces that because again, in power armor, you're probably standing still more than you are in regular armor. So for sure, aim for Sentinels if you can. And then finally, Toxic, a chance to be dealing 100 poison damage to melee attackers. So that covers it. Those are all the legendary attributes that are and are not coming to power armor. Ah, oh my god. I, I, I stumbled a little bit through this video. I'm so sorry, but I am not re-recording. Let's get to the conclusion. Alrighty, Wastelanders, thank you for keeping up with me and my croaky voice. I hope you're all okay. Let me know again if you have any thoughts in the comments below. And until next time, this has been the Lone Vault Wanderer. Please take care of yourselves and would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.